Hey guys, this is Gamer Sophist. I'm Flying Ninja Dragon Fury, and today I'm going to be discussing these super rare, super cool Series 5 cards that are coming out. With the odds that are being thrown around, actually getting your hands on one of these outside of coughing up the 6,000 tokens is probably never going to happen. So what everybody is wondering is how relevant these cards are actually going to be. Well, fear not, because I'm here to provide an initial analysis on these and separate the trash from the treasure. It would also help to like and subscribe, and I'm sure doing so will increase your chances of drawing that sunspot on turn 1. Also be aware that uh, I did do a previous video on the Series 4 card, so if you haven't checked it out yet, definitely have a look after you're done here. So, without further ado, let's begin with the guy who needs no introduction, since you can already pull him from some effects in-game, Galactus! Here's the elephant in the room probably the most talked about card on forums, and has the potential to devastate if used properly. He can make the whole rest of the game not matter, and can steal you victory from the face of utter defeat, unless the enemy plays their 6 drop on the same location. So how do we use him? Well, the answer is to play him on turn 5 using some sort of energy generator, like Psylocke, Wave, or Electro, and then dropping a turn 6 of Destiny to follow it up. If you can generate enough power on turn 6, you could probably play this on locations that already have a presence, and that might be a cool method. Drop this on a location where the enemy has played 4 cards and is still empty for you, then as long as you can beat that number minus 2 on the next turn, victory is assured. So when talking about making huge turns, death always seems to come to mind. And I wonder if cards destroyed by Galactus dropping will count towards the death total. If they do, we've got a combo, folks. Turn 5 Galactus to an empty location, followed by a turn 6 death plus another death 6 drop. Probably not a lot can deal with that. But here's the problem with Galactus. Debris kills it, squirrels kill it, raptor kills it, vipers kill it. If there's any scenario where you can't keep a location completely open, this will not function. Remember that Galactus has to drop on a location where you have no other cards, even unrevealed cards, in order to activate the world ship ability. Definitely better run Killmonger to keep your lanes clear, but hey, he works well in decks with death anyway. I'm wondering if, if this card will be an include in most decks, but I don't think so because you need to be dropping this turn 5 to have any relevant effect. Like in a situation where you drop him turn 6 into a location that's empty for both players and the other person doesn't play a 3 power card there, guess what? Shocker or Cyclops would have won you that game as well. Next up we got Valkyrie, and man does this lady look spicy. This is a deadly card that will make people think twice about playing tall. It's like Shang-Chi on steroids, and it'll even trash people that have 8 power, 6 power, anything. Dropping Valkyrie on a location says whoever has more cards here wins. I feel we may see this card played almost everywhere, as it seems to be tech against basically everything, provided you are able to fill up the site with your own plays. Turn 6 though, there's not a lot of math to do, and you can even throw in a 1-drop to take the lane. This might be a fun card in Cerebro 3 as well. Mind you, all your stuff probably already is 3 power. Mind you, Dropping Valkyrie into a 4v4 lane with Blue Marvel or Cerebro is going to win you a lane there, so that's pretty insane. Just watch out for enemies playing blanket buffs as well because they will still merc you. Remember, Spectrum adds plus 2 to ongoing, so be careful playing Valkyrie into ongoing decks, especially when you have priority. You've been warned. Next up we've got Super Skrull, and man, this guy's a whopper too. He's purely a counter card because you can't control what's in your opponent's deck, but he seems like an absolute beast in the right circumstances. What are those circumstances though? Well, Blue Marvel's a pretty obvious one that would help everybody. Colossus ensures that your Skrull never leaves the table, and Luke Cage ensures that your board doesn't get annihilated by hazmat cheese. There are some bad ongoing effects as well, but the nice thing is if too much of this stuff is present, you can always just not play the Super Skrull. Things like a Electro, Lizard, Typhoid Mary, Red Skull, Ebony Ma can really ruin your day. And the scary thing is that Super Skrull's ability is not on reveal, but ongoing, so he will adopt effects that are played later. Another thing to note is that due to Skrull's ability still being ongoing, it can be purged by Enchantress and get stolen by Rogue. Now wouldn't that be funny? So I think this guy may be useful if there's ongoing decks that are getting out of control. 
and it would be useful in the ongoing mirror match as well. Right now it may not seem much play, but it's definitely there if some archetype becomes unbeatable. Hey, I wonder. Imagine you were playing Patriot or Zoo, dropped Super Skrull, donated it to the enemy with Viper, and then stole the ability with Rogue. Would it double up all your ongoing powers? That might be crazy. It's only a three card combo that needs to be played after your ongoing combo, so it's one in a million, especially since Viper and Rogue are both hitting randomly, but it would be fun the one time it actually worked. Hey. Let us know in the comments how you think this interaction would actually work out. Next up is Shuri, and you know what folks? I think I know what I'm going to be spending my first 6,000 tokens on. This is another card that has a million and five uses, and may see an awful lot of play for anyone lucky enough to pull her. Turn 4 Shuri, skip turn 5, turn 6, 40 power infinite. Okay, that's probably not the best use. What initially jumps into my mind, and for the first time in Marvel Snap history, is a combo that actually makes sense thematically, and that is Wakanda Forever. Shuri plus Black Panther just makes T'Challa even crazier, and then following that up with Arnim Zola would make people cry even more than usual. Well, okay, maybe Zola isn't thematic. That seems good, but seriously, is it really necessary? You're already dropping a bomb with that combo, and maybe Shuri will just make things more excessive. It's useful, and definitely a tool that will be going into these new pa Black Panther decks that we're seeing all over the place, but I'm just saying that she's really just for this is kind of missing the point. The power of Shuri is that she's so transferable, like to make her work out evenly, she'd need to increase the power of the next card played by 6, making her net you 8 power on board for the 4 cost you paid for. That's a pretty loose condition, considering you're probably following up her with a 5 drop, like Gamora, getting you at least 7, more like 12 extra power, Red Skull for another 15, Spider Woman gives you 7, Vision for 7, and now you have a movable 14 point package. Captain Marvel will give you a 6, Abomination will give you a 9, and even Dr. Octopus will give you a 10. You know, even Nick Fury will come out at 14, effectively making Shuri a 9 point play. Notice how none of these cards have any context besides power level? What's nice is that power is kind of a raw stat that every deck is trying to produce. So doubling that is probably always a good thing provided you're playing cards that will have more than 3 base power, which is almost everyone. When you look at other cards besides 5 costs, there's some crazy opportunities as well. Typhoid Mary, the new Atuma, and many others. Player on turn 5 followed by a turn 6 drop, and you were looking at some insane power. Now, will she work like her lab? If so, Guardians of the Galaxy become even crazier followed by a Shuri play, and Namor is suddenly not looking like a terrible card. Okay, he still is. Of all the cards in this set, I think that Shuri is the most limitless. You can put her in almost any deck and she will improve it. Just make sure you're timing the play properly, because making Bast or Ant-Man 2 power is pretty lame. Next up we've got Bast, and I mean, Bast seems good, but also seems like maybe there won't be a huge impact here. I mean, it can buff up a handful of ones to make them blade without having to discard a card, and it makes Iron Man bring some power to the board himself. She'll make the hood a much better one drop, and makes Mr. Negative generate a bit of power himself. Actually, in a negative deck might be the best use for her. Some of your low power stuff gets stuck in your hand and doesn't get negativized. Is that even a word? And Bass can turn them into a little bit of power. She's only a one cost too, so not bad at all. I think we'll see Bast all over the place in negative decks, since they're looking for zero power stuff, and the only reversals are on the last two cards. Bast will ensure that the rest of those zero power draws you already had in hand can generate some oomph themselves. She also doesn't get murdered by the negative effect, so her being only one power is actually a good thing. And here's a fun one in a million combo. Bast to make the goblin in your hand a three power, then fire him into bar with no name to win that location. Last but not least is Thanos. And this one I've got to see to believe. If there was any card in this list to build a deck around, it's Thanos. He fattens your deck way up, but most of those stones have card draw abilities to let you rip through your deck faster. It's a shame that there aren't a lot of cards that let you just draw cards, but maybe Adam Warlock will actually find a home in this deck. I wonder though whether this is worth the effort. The end game here, <laughs> okay no more puns, is giving Thanos plus 10 power if all 6 stones are in play. So if your board is jammed up with 6 1 power cards, 
Then your six drop that you might not even draw from a now 18 card deck is 18 power. Maybe it's about doing something else with the infinity stones, like you can Kazar Blue Marvel to pump them up. And sadly, Patriot doesn't work because they all have abilities. Hey, maybe Thanos is gonna be the new zoo. Well, until Killmonger destroys them all. Again, I may really be missing something here, and Thanos Draw may be the new top tier deck that's completely unstoppable, but I'm really thinking that this is a Timmy card. Reserved for those, for those who love large numbers and those who love to snap when they snap so they can snap while they're snapping. In closing, I should mention that if you Shuri Thanos after all the stones are in play, he would be 36 power. Uh, Zola that, and you'd be dropping 72 power on turn 6. Of course, you'd need Electro out there to be able to play T Thanos on turn 5. On the positive side, you don't need to kill Electro because this is a 1 card play each turn on 4, 5, and 6. But like, who the heck would play Electro in a Thanos deck? So a lot of these cards look interesting, and many fit some interesting niche roles, but I think moving forward what we're going to see a lot more of are Shuri and Valkyrie. Like, Galactus and Thanos seem pretty cool, but I have a feeling that in practice they just aren't going to work as intended. Bast really might help put negative on the map. It's a really scary deck when it works, and Bast may just give it the consistency it needs to be more than a meme. It scares me though that Deathwave seems to be getting more tools than anybody with She-Hulk and potentially Galactus. And like, does Deathwave really need any more tools? Well. That's it for me, folks, and may the fortunes forever be in your favor, and let us know if you pull any of these beasts in the comments down below. Until then, have a good one, and keep on snapping.